Good morning. Welcome to Burksville Baptist Church this morning. So glad that you were able to come and, and worship with us this morning. We do want to give a special shout out to anybody who's joining us uh, virtually uh, this morning as well. Uh, this is Rooted Sunday. Anytime there is a fifth Sunday of the month, our youth and, and our children get to work together to help lead the service. And so uh, you guys uh, make sure on your way out today that you tell these guys what an awesome, awesome job that they did. To start things off this morning, we're going to uh, begin with a song of worship. I think we should all know it. If you guys could stand, stand with us this morning. Sing with us, nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sin? me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh precious, oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No First, this is all my hope and peace. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other sounds I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All right. This morning, um, I don't know if it's because college basketball has started or what, uh, but I'm feeling a little bit competitive this morning, so I think let's try a good old-fashioned uh, Baptist competition here. Uh, we're going to try the first verse again. Um, Silas, I realize this puts us in a pretty uh, tough way here, but let's go, let's go men versus women, men, uh, uh, men versus females. Uh, so guys, sing with me, and ladies, sing with the ladies. Wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's go back to the chorus now. Oh, precious is the flow. Silas, I'm kind of feeling like a sore loser here a little bit because uh, I don't like ending on that note. So let's do this. Okay, okay. Cassidy, how old are you again? 18. Eight, okay, 18. Cassidy's 18. Let's say 18 and older is going to sing with us. Ha, 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 Maddie Kenzie. Anyone under 18 gets to sing with Maddie and Kenzie. Here we go. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus all together now oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other sounds I know nothing but the blood
Let's, uh, let's pray together this morning. Uh, God, we thank you so much for today, God. Uh, during the season of Thanksgiving, God, uh, as we are thankful for so many uh, blessings that you've given us, God, let us not forget your blood that was shed for us. Uh, God, today as we come together, let us celebrate uh, that gift that you've given us, God, that uh, great love that you have for us, Father. Just inhabit this place with uh, your Holy Spirit and let our praises uh, become a sweet sound unto your ear. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Uh, the Foothills Academy Christmas dinner will be December 6th. Thanks to everyone that has already volunteered to help. We still need a couple big crop pots of mashed potatoes and green beans. We also need desserts. Thanks. Please be in prayer for this mission. See Angela if you can help. Be preparing Christmas cards for the veterans' homes. We need them by December 12th through the 14th. Thank you. We're going to continue to worship this morning. If you would stand up uh, with us again. I will tell you this morning, uh, between all the things that uh, uh, we've worked on, to prepare, I think getting a rhythm down has been the hardest thing. Can you all agree with that? Okay, good. Uh, I was looking at some of my favorite songs for uh, the Thanksgiving season uh, to keep things uh, uh, just kind of upbeat. So if you guys could, now I know like we're, we're pretty bad just this morning, but there's this thing called clapping, and it's not even a sin or anything. Right? It's like you can do it. So uh, Cassidy, Olivia, they've got a little bit of a, a, a beat here going for us. Somebody give me a clap start here. There we go. Thank you, Ezra. Words you up here. Sing along. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. That's good clapping, guys. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad, glad, glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. You guys are doing such a good job. Let's just keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad, glad, glad. He has made me glad, He has made me glad, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. I was just going to do it twice, but you are still clapping, so let's go one more time. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart, I will enter His courts with praise, I will say this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad, He has made me glad, I will rejoice for He has made me glad, 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 He has made me glad, He has made me glad, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. I'm going to hand things over to these ladies now.
everybody. So today's the first Sunday of Advent season and our first theme is hope. But whenever we talk about hope that's offered in Jesus, it's not the kind of hope that we normally think of. Whenever we use the word hope, we may want something to happen, but know there's a chance that it may not. I forgot a coin. You were going you supposed to get me a coin, but anyway, <laughs> I can flip this coin, let's pretend I did, and I can say, well, I hope it lands on heads but I realize there's a chance that it'll land on tails. God's hope is not like that. When we have hope in God, it means that we are waiting for something that we know for sure will happen. We're waiting in anticipation with the faith that God will do what he promised. It's a different kind of hope. When I think of a type of hope we have in God, I think of a doorknob. When me and Hannah were little, Daddy would, um, he works at the highway department, as y'all know, and... He, whenever it would be snowing or would have bad weather, um, he would go out in the middle of the night. And Hannah and I always worried about our daddy being out late on slick and dangerous roads. We would wait in hopeful anticipation for his return. Sometimes Hannah and I would sit and wait at the front door hoping the doorknob would turn. We knew whenever we would see the doorknob turning that daddy was back with us. We would wait in hopeful anticipation but still have faith that he would come back. You know how we knew he would come back. What made us so confident 
that we would see the doorknob turn. He always came home, and he never let us down. Whenever we would leave, he would promise to always come back, and he always did come back. During Advent, we remember that hope that the Israelites had that the Messiah would come. It was not a flip of a coin. He knew he would, they knew he would come. How did they know he would come? God never let them down before. God has promised man would survive after the flood, and he made, God, and he made good on his promise. God had promised to lead his people out of slavery, and he made good on that promise. God had promised to provide for his people in the wilderness, and he made good on that promise. God had promised the house of David would sit on the throne, and he made good on that promise. God has promised his people in Messiah, and they knew he would make good on his promise. So today, when we talk about hope, we don't mean there's a chance it won't happen, just like I knew that doorknob would turn when Daddy would return from work. We know that God makes good on his promises, and we can have hope in that. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the many blessings you have poured upon us. We thank you for the children of this church and pray for their futures. We thank you for the hope we have in you. Forgive where we fail you. We ask those in the things of Jesus' name. Amen. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I fulfill the good promise I made of, to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is and just right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord, a righteous Savior. Today we light the candle of expectation and hope. May it remind each and every one of us God's great promise to us. He is our hope, He is our Redeemer, and He is our Savior. Father, during this season, remind us of your promises. And help us repair our lives. This is my prayer. Amen.
so much for today, God. We thank you for the hope that you offer us, Father. Uh, we thank you so much for the gift of your Son who came to uh, search us out, God, and desire a relationship with us. Uh, God, we pray for the next portion of our service, Father. We pray that you would uh, just uh, uh, give Matthew, Father, the words to say to share with us, God, that uh, you would have us to hear. Uh, God, we pray for your blessings on the reading of your word and just uh, uh, ask that you would come and dwell here with us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Burstville Baptist Church. It's good to be here this morning with you on this Advent season. Today is the first day of hope, as Ansley and Camden said. Um, I had to do a little research on what Advent really meant. Um, as I was little, me and Andrew would get an Advent calendar, a Lego Advent calendar to help us get through the 24 days of Christmas leading up to it. And uh, each year we anticipate it, look forward to it and everything. And uh, there's... Those of you who don't know, there's it's a little 10 to 15 piece Lego set that helps you build the Lego city and everything. So uh, I had to really research about what Advent truly meant about God and Christ and all that. And uh, I've learned that the word Advent means coming. The biblical Advent refers to the coming of Christ and the four weeks of Advent to the season built up the anticipation of the birth of the Messiah. I also learned that each of the candles over here that we light have a symbolic meaning. One of them is peace. And as Ansley and Camden said, another one is hope. I have a question for y'all. Do y'all have peace in your life right now with this coronavirus going on? I'm going to start off with a story here. In 1981, a retired couple was alarmed by the threat of a nuclear war, probably like we are today with coronavirus. So they undertook a study of all the inhabited places on the earth. Their goal was to, was to determine where in the world would be the best and safest place to live. A place of ultimate security. They studied and traveled and traveled and studied. Finally, they found the place. And on Christmas in 1981, they sent their pastor a card from their new home in the Falkland Islands. However, their paradise was soon turned into a war zone by Great Britain and Argentina in April the next year. Everyone is searching for peace, especially when we look at recent events such as riots and racial disturbances. Whether you're a country's leader sitting across a table from other national leaders or a businessman facing financial difficulties due to COVID-19, a homemaker turned homeschool teacher trying to corral the kids, or a student wondering how this virus is going to affect his or her future. Everyone wants peace. And most people will go to whatever limits to find peace. But most of us, if we're being honest with ourselves, we have to admit that we experience more stress and maybe even anger than peace. Wouldn't you all agree that there is nothing that people talk more of but experience less than peace? Our day is like Jeremiah's, in that people cry, peace, peace, when there is no peace, as we read in Jeremiah 6, 14. Most Americans live in comfortable homes, but domestic violence is at an all-time high. Our cities are the most modern in the world, yet the rioting is an example of our anger. Our communication technology is like no other, but 
there has never been a more misunderstanding. In fact, people come to church so filled with anxiety that it's almost impossible for them to concentrate. Can we all agree? Where can we go for peace? Where on this earth can we discover lasting and fulfilling peace? For many, the destination of finding peace may seem so far out of reach. But the place of peace is actually within ourselves. The only lasting source of peace is God himself. Where can we go for peace? The Bible talks about two kinds of peace related to God. These two avenues are the beginning of lasting peace for our life. The first kind of peace is spiritual peace. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, as we read in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. That's the foundation, the bottom line. We're going to have to have peace with God before we can have any other kind of peace. A man visited his doctor for an exam. The doctor asked, now what seems to be the trouble? The patient answered, Doc, I've got troubles everywhere I look. I've got troubles in my home, my business, just everywhere, and I'm just plain run down. When the exam was finished, the physician asked the patient, You're not run down. You're the opposite. You're wound up. The man responded, Well, Doc, give me something to calm me down then. What do you want? asked the doctor. Give me a tranquilizer or something, said the patient. Very well, responded the doctor. He sat down and began writing a prescription. The man took the prescription and stuck it in his pocket without even reading it. He rushed off to the neighborhood pharmacy to get the prescription filled. The pharmacist looked at the prescription and said to the man, I'm sorry, but I can't fill the prescription. What do you mean? asked the man. This is a drugstore, isn't it? You're a pharmacist, aren't you? This is a doctor's prescription, so why can't you fill it? The pharmacist answered, I'm sorry, sir, but we don't stock this in our store. If you want the prescription filled, go home and open up your Bible. The man looked at the prescription for the first time, and it read, Take three doses of Romans chapter 5, verse 1 every day. He went home and looked up the verse in his Bible. It read, Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God and through our Lord Jesus Christ. Immediately, the man called the doctor and asked, What do you mean by this Prince of Peace in your life? <clears throat> the physician answered, Your trouble is spiritual, not physical. What you need is peace. I can't give it to you. The pharmacist can't give it to you. Only God can give you peace. The fact remains that before you can experience personal peace, you must receive the prince of peace in your life. How can you do this? It's simple. Admit to God that you're a sinner and that your sins separate you from God. Believe that Jesus Christ is God's son and accept God's gift of forgiveness from sin. And confess your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior the Lord. The second kind of peace is emotional peace. We must have peace with God before we can experience the peace of God. I'm going to say that one more time. We must have peace with God, then we have peace of God. This is what most people think of when they think of the word peace. An internal sense of well-being and order. However, scriptures say, since God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Everyone who knows the Lord Jesus Christ can go through any problem and face fear or even death and still have some kind of peace in your heart. When your family has contracted an illness or you lose your job, you still have some kind of peace in you and you don't know where it comes from. This peace is not the absence of conflict but an ability to cope with the conflicts and frustrations of life. Even in the midst of life's difficulties, God's peace will be present. If we truly want to live a life of peace and experience the peace of God continually, we must allow Christ to rule and control our lives. So, 
what do you need to ask of God now? Do you need to ask him to come into your life so you, you can experience peace with him? Or do you need to ask God to control your life so that you can experience peace of God? You'll never really truly understand lasting peace until Jesus Christ is in charge of your life. Peace, remember, is not a trouble-free life. It's a sense of calm in the middle of life's storms. So what's robbing you of peace today? Is it guilt? Is it the fear of not knowing what's going to happen next? Is it worry? A job change? Finances? A big surgery coming up? A difficult person? Whatever may be bothering you, you can talk to Christ about any of these things, anytime. So this time I want to ask the music team to come up. And uh, I want to remind you that the God of all peace wants to give you peace. And he is here now, ready to give that gift to you. Will you accept it? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning to thank you. Thank you for allowing us to gather here in this beautiful church for your words of praise. As we open this Advent season, thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ and help us keep our focus on him this season. Let's not get caught up in this hustle and bustle of the season this year and miss the chance to celebrate the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love that you sent to us on that first Christmas. I ask that you be with each and every family here this morning and those viewing elsewhere. Protect us, guide us, and keep us safe from harm. In your name we pray. Amen. Please sing and sing with us. Living water, and I 
like a tree planted by the streams of living water. So let it rain, let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. So let it rain, let it rain. Just the voices now. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Amen. Let's give the youth a round of applause. I know uh, I'm overwhelmed, uh, and, and that should be all of our prayers right now. Just let it rain. Uh, his hope, his peace, let it rain, let it flood us this morning, especially in the midst of everything going on. Man, great, great job. But if you would, just go ahead and, and take a seat. Uh, and uh, we will be uh, concluding our service. Uh, but again, let me just say, great job, guys. Every, each and every one of you all, just phenomenal. And I'm just sitting there thinking, like, this is the next generation uh, for this church, for this town, you know, for the world. Uh, and just, just man, I just, I, I personally continue to pray for you guys. Uh, I prayed last night, and, uh, and we as a church will continue to pray for you as well that, as uh, the years go by, you guys will still have a great passion for Jesus and have a passion for this. I know this, sometimes we like, hey, do this, do this, do this. But one day it's going to be alive in you. And that's our prayers that God will just continue to grow that passion to preach, to sing, uh, worship songs to him, to even pray out loud. Uh, how cute was that, right? Uh, just, just phenomenal. And, and you're cute too, right? Romans 10 says, how beautiful are the feet that brings the good news. So, uh, man, no, no, great job though. But uh, yeah, this is the future of the church. Uh, it's just, just amazing, just amazing. But uh, with that, we do want to thank each and every one of you guys for being here. And thank you for the youth. Thank you for all the adults that helped with the youth to, to orchestrate this service. Uh, I've never been part of anything like this. We've had youth takeovers but nothing like this, so it was just, it was really warming to my soul, and, and so I, it was just phenomenal, uh, so thank you guys. Also, I just want to do a quick shout out, man, does it not look good in here? Like, it, it looks awesome in here, right? So thank you for everyone that showed up yesterday to help us decorate, uh, and, uh, and it, it does look really good, so thank you for that as well. And I got one more announcement, and uh, uh, while it saddens me, uh, but it also, uh, I rejoice because of how awesome God is. Um, but for some of you guys, some of you guys already know, but for those who do not know, uh, my man Nathan here has accepted a, uh, the call to be an interim pastor at the uh, church in Albany. And so this will be his last official service as the youth pastor up here leading and all that because he is going to go to uh, and be the interim pastor at the church in Albany. And so, again, while it saddens me, we also rejoice uh, it's what we call, it's what, what I like to call um, kingdom goodbyes. Now, although this is not a goodbye, but still it's, it's, it's hey, hey um, we love you, but we understand. Because there's something more greater than, than us. Like my selfishness wants to keep him here, but I know it's not about me. Uh, it's not about you. It's not about this church per se, but we got uh, a great, uh, it's more broader than just this. We're talking about kingdom work that's going to last for all eternity. And God has called my man Nathan to go and be an interim at a church to help serve those people and to help build that church up. And then, uh, and so we, we are excited. While, while um, it pains us, we are still excited. And so what I would like to do is ask that we would get a couple of the deacons, a couple of leaders, whoever would like to. Uh, Nathan, just come down here. And, and uh, I don't know if he's comfortable or not, but maybe keep six feet distant. But just extend a hand to him. And I want to pray over him. Uh, kind of like we would send someone out, because in essence, you know, we're sending them out, right? We, we love them, and, we want, and we're going to continue to pray for him, but I want to ask that he'll come up here, and, and if you would, stand to your feet, extend a hand, 
And then we want to pray over him, pray uh, a special blessing over him and his family. We want to pray for that church that would, they would just love him uh, ferociously and that he would do great works there um, in the name of Christ, of course. And then also after that, um, I am, uh, I'm closing the service. I'm doing my part here. After that, they're going to come and lead us into one more worship song, and then Nathan will pray uh, and dismiss us. But I want to ask that he will share.